there we go guys our game has successfully started and we are getting more fps than what we used to get on yuzu emulator android yo what's up guys it's aptrix here after getting hundreds of comments from you guys i have decided to make an detailed guide just today the skyline infinity table version 1.0 update was released in today's video we'll be taking a look at it along with that i'll talk about minimum requirements best settings and how to improve your gameplay experience i know many of you guys wanted to try this emulator out but didn't know how to do that so before starting if you guys are new here smash that like button subscribe turn on all notification we have to reach 60,000 subscribers before the end of this year that's my personal goal and i need your help for that let's start with minimum requirements android version 10 or above that's all you need if you want to try out skyline infinity but if you want to play 3d titles then here are the minimum requirements 4 to 6 GB of RAM, also Snapdragon 680 processor or above. With these minimum requirements, I'm pretty sure that you should be able to even emulate games like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. So let's begin with our today's video. Alright guys, to start off, if you want to try this emulator out, then you'll have to uninstall the previous build of Skyline Enhanced Infinity. If you have those, you will also need to uninstall Skyline Edge Emulator. Skyline Infinity is also known as Skyline Enhanced Infinity and it has just gotten a brand new logo as well. For those of you guys who don't know about this emulator, it is based basically a forked version of Skyline as well as Strato Emulator. I'll put the Instagram of the developer in description box below. You can check it out if you also want to try out the Infinity Emulator. So let me start off by talking about its features. Now Infinity Emulator gets an brand new UI which is different than any of the Skyline Emulator folks. As you guys can see, you'll get a separate background showcasing the game so they are better highlighted but if we just go ahead and open settings then we also get the brand new settings from the upcoming Strato Emulator Android. Inside theme you get light theme as well as dark themes in dark theme you get a different ui so that's pretty cool i guess let's just go ahead and open settings as i was saying this emulator gets the few early features of strato emulator as well for example being able to add firmware to make sure few games run with better performance better graphics and also few games which were not booting previously can boot you'll need to test it out for yourself as skyline infinity hasn't really been tested by many people you also get a dedicated option to manage save data this is known as the save management section it is again one of the new upcoming features of strato emulator android so we'll just go ahead and tap on cancel if we tap on this about section we can see the change log fix some graphical issues fix some text glitches fix some bugs change logo and also here are the credits with that being said let's start with the best settings make sure to turn on dock mode if you want better graphics if you want better performance then disable dock mode basically with the help of dock mode you'll get better graphics but a little bit less fps or performance api make sure to set it as vulcan scroll down make sure to enable show performance statistics afterwards aspect ratio set it to device aspect ratio let's scroll down we have the show pause button option make sure to enable this in terms of GPU driver configuration, you can use any latest Mesa Turnip Adreno driver. I would recommend you guys the Mesa Turnip Adreno driver revision 8 which was just launched Vulkan version is 1.3.269. Make sure to try it out if you guys have a Snapdragon 6 series or 7 series GPUs for best graphics and performance results. Afterwards make sure to enable disable frame throttling option. Now if you enable it, you might face some freezing issues but if you disable it, your FPS will be stuck at 30 and 30 FPS is really boring. Uh, because because of cutscenes. Next up is executor slot count. Here you will be able to read that higher may sometimes perform better but will use more RAM. So if you guys have a device with lot of RAM then make sure to set it to 12. But if you guys have a low end device you can keep it at 4 or 6. With that being said let's scroll down executor plus threshold make sure to keep it at 256. Also make sure to disable direct memory import option this causes you black screen issues quite a lot and also crashing issues so don't use direct memory import. Afterwards enable force maximum GPU clocks free guest texture memory scroll down enable fast GPU read back and writes and also 60 FPS and those are the best settings make sure to also enable Vulkan validation layer. This is a brand new option from Strato Emulator Android but once all of that has been done we are now all set to using the latest Skyline Enhanced Infinity Emulator. For today's video let's just go ahead and try out Attack on Titan 2 game which should work on Skyline Emulator as far as I remember it was bootable and playable and immediately you'll be able to see at the top left corner we are getting around 900 FPS that's pretty impressive let's just go ahead and create a new save data there we go attack on titan 2 press any button let's start the story mode now previously there used to be a lot of freezing issue during this loading screen but i hope that has been fixed let's skip the cutscene there might be a black screen issue for some reason nope there isn't any issue there we go guys our game has successfully started and we are getting more fps than what we used to get on Yuzu emulator android yeah attack on titan 2 works properly on the skyline enhanced infinity emulator 
I'm really confused about the release date of Shadow Emulator Android because it has been delayed for quite a long time. In my next video, we'll be taking a look at some of the early gameplays of Shadow Emulator Android. So make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Let's try out a different game, uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm trilogy and see for ourselves how well will it work. As far as it goes, I am not really seeing any kind of issues. Let's start a new game. Alright guys, the battle is about to begin and I am really surprised this game works absolutely fantastic on the Skyline Enhanced Infinity Emulator. There are no lags, no crashing issues, no frame drops, but there are some graphical issues. But it is expected with all the Skyline emulators, uh, you can change the graphic drivers to see which one fixes the graphical issues. But anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notifications. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.